This, my name is Royce Hot Bell, <laughs> owner, uh, founder, owner, and operator of Royce Hot Gold Treasures. And the voice you hear behind the camera is my darling husband, David Bell. And together we make up recycled. And so uh, my decoupage papers are 20 inch by 30 inch. So they're oversized decoupage papers. Um, a lot of the designs are for furniture, but tonight we're going to be focusing mostly on like crafts and paper crafts. So this is one of the designs that I did make for my crafters. And there are a lot of different project blocks. So even this is like half of it. I'm going to show you guys the other half in a minute. And there are one, two, three, four, five, six individual project blocks on this side. And then we have the strips here, which I kind of saw that as being like um, washi tape, kind of, you know, is what I was thinking when I made these strips. But um, these are opportunities to like add a pop of color somewhere with just a strip. And then the other side of it, I'm going to show you guys um, as we go through our lesson tonight. So, um, I think I'm gonna start with the hardest project first and then we'll work back to the easiest. Last year, I was playing with resin paper and the recycled decoupage paper and I was so incredibly happy with the results. Tell me that, but so you guys know the deal, half and half, right? Amazing resin. And this isn't the casting resin though, this is epoxy resin and um, mix that up. But when you use the epoxy resin, you have to stir it for a long time. I cut a lot of that out. And I literally just painted it on and I have a piece of wax paper on the bottom there so my paper doesn't stick. And I just painted over both sides and then I'll take that piece of paper and I hung it up outside. Uh, <laughs> Simply Joy also says, uh, love the paper, it's gorgeous. Carolyn Holly Keller, is the resin on both sides or just one side? On both sides. I know it was really fast on that picture. I didn't wanna keep you guys on there for a super long time but I did paint both sides before I hung my paper. And this is a picture of my lantern that I made. I bought the Dollar Tree canvases, four of them, and I took the canvas off to build this um, lantern, but I used the resin paper inside of the lantern and then an, a, bot a battery operated um, candle. It was so pretty at night when it was illuminated because the paper is so transparent. Is, the, so... is the paper brittle or can you bend it? So the paper is a little, it's not like super brittle. But like, it's stiff? It's stiff though. It's not soft. When you first take it, like when I first took it down like six hours afterwards, it was it was a lot more malleable. But as the resin cures, it does get more like stiff. And so, um, but if you are someone who does any kind of card making or I don't know if Beth is here tonight, but she does a lot of junk journaling. This is super fun to be able to have this transparent option to layer all of your elements in your junk journal. And so that was one of the things or one thing that you can do to um, kind of change the quality of the paper, right? It completely changes it. Um, you go from like a tissue paper to something that is completely different. So this is a piece of my resin paper, right? Because I know somebody's asking, okay, Royce, that's fine, but then what would you do with that? There's a lot you could do with that. Um, I love this little um, chingadier that I bought. Don't tell my husband I bought new craft supplies, okay? Because I can make my own tags. I probably should have put that in there straight. It's all whopper jaw. <laughs> but I can take this and I can put it on something else. So let's say I had stenciled something here or maybe I decoupage like a really pretty face on this tag underneath and then the music notes were laid over the top of that. How cute would that be? But even more than that, if I wanted, I could actually stamp out like a specific shape on this one and I could put more resin on top of this to make it like sturdier and I could make um, like a pendant for a necklace. So the resin paper is so much fun and I'm hoping to have an opportunity to go really in depth with this because this could be like a whole lesson just within itself. Um, but I did want to introduce the idea because I know y'all, y'all gonna put some of y'all's awesome sauce on it and y'all gonna come back with some crazy good ideas. But so I'm gonna show you guys what I did to these papers and then I'm gonna show you the papers and then we'll have a conversation about what you can do with the papers after you do this. So this is me. I'm just using some Rust-Oleum clear spray paint. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? It's just clear spray paint, literally. 
and I spray one side and then I spray the other side. I like to do it inside of boxes because A, I, keep, I can keep control of the overspray and then I don't lose a lot of product because it gets blown into the wind because you have to do it outside, right? And so I just like legitimately just sprayed that paper with the clear and then I let it dry. And so I get this paper and it's not quite as transparent as the resin paper, but it does change the quality of the paper like a lot and the white paper even more. So I wanted to use some that weren't white. I was curious to see what it would look like. It's a lot more transparent. So if I were to put it over another design, um, it would show through more readily than it would if it weren't sprayed. Um, and I just did some different ones just to show you guys kind of what it would look like. And I did spray both sides and let it dry. I like to spray both sides at the same time and let it dry because I feel like I get more transparency than when I spray one and let it dry and then spray the other one. This is the brick, you guys. So you guys will notice how the brick has a lot of white in it, right? So every part that was white is like almost absolutely transparent with the spray. And so this is super fun. I can see this being used in junk journals. So this is what I use, decoupage with this paper, and it'll actually be more transparent. And you guys know what? This is not going to wrinkle. So like if you wanted to get, like if you are, if you are someone who wants perfection and you don't want any wrinkles, if you sprayed your paper, you would get zero wrinkles because this is now um, sealed with an acrylic product, which means your paper is not going to respond to any moisture. So you could decoupage this on a lavender shade and you wouldn't have to worry about any wrinkles. <clears throat> so you can see here, like you guys, we made these together a few weeks ago, right? Our coasters. And so you can see, look how pretty that is with the flowers coming through. Like when you guys are doing your junk journaling or your art journaling, you guys can layer these different elements um, to create just really beautiful things. I'm excited. This one is my favorite because it's the fastest, right? It's the fastest and the easiest. I just took these and threw them in the box and sprayed them all at once today. And they're a little shinier than I like because all I could put my hands on today was the glossy. But this does come in satin and matte. So if I want it, well, I do have matte somewhere around here. I just couldn't find it today. Um, but you guys will see how the, the bricks had a white background and like it is legitimate. It is so transparent. That white just becomes super transparent. Um, you can really see um, what's behind that a lot more than you can on the other pieces. And so this is a way that you can transform the paper. It's more transparent and it's like deli paper or um, yeah, like deli paper. So you guys know a lot of us who do junk journaling, we like working with the deli paper because it's beautifully transparent. So this is a way for you to create your own deli paper, except it have like beautiful artwork that's already on it, right? And Tom, though, excuse me, Tommy Kuro's says, do you have to put it on something else after you've sprayed it to let it dry? Did you hang it? I didn't hang it. I just I just let it hang out in the box. I'm lazy. I just like draped it over the side of the box because it doesn't, well, I guess it can stick. If there's like a puddle of product somewhere, it'll stick to that. But um, for the most part, it doesn't stick to anything. So I just hang it over the side of the box after I'm done spraying it and let it hang out and dry. First. So like if you had a junk journal, how fun is that? right? You could put your little findings in there and tuck it into your junk journal. And it's super pretty. And it looks, to me, it looks ethereal. Um, this paper does after you spray it when it takes on that, that new transparency. I am trimming this, you guys, because the way that this is set up, and I should put this in my Amazon store too, because you can make from a 1.5 1, 1. inch wide tag all the way up to two and a half inch wide tag. And there's even steps on here so that you know when you're putting it in so that you can make your own tags, which.
So our last, my last experiment, I think was a success. And for my people who are not going to be comfortable using resin, I think that you guys will like this one. So my dear friend, Jane Belante from um, Jane Belante Art introduced me to Diamond Glaze. Um, and it's actually a dimensional adhesive. And a lot of people use this in, in, um, instead of uh, resin, right? to kind of get the same look as resin, but it doesn't smell like resin at all. And so I used um, Judy Ken's Diamond Glaze and I use it full strength. I didn't water it down and I just took it. We're gonna do it together in just a minute and I painted it over this paper. Um, I'm gonna have to take this. Well, you know what, I'm gonna use the other side. And so after I went over it, um, I'm able to just peel it right off of the plastic and I'm left with something that's almost as transparent as the resin paper, right? Um, I don't know if you guys can see the difference in the halves. On this half, I use just the straight diamond glaze. Um, on this side, I actually misted my paper before putting the diamond glaze. And it's actually more transparent on this side. I don't know if I can show that with the camera, but it's actually more transparent on the side that I missed it. And so we're gonna do that as a best practice today when we do our paper. But I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I did this. And I was able to create this without having to deal with the fumes of um, the resin. And so I think it is just as beautiful as, well, I don't know, I think, let's let's look at it. It's pretty close to the resin paper, right? I mean, that's pretty dang close. And you don't have to deal with the fumes or anything. So let's do one together. I think we're only gonna do one thing together, so we'll have time. This is just plastic. And I know you guys are asking what kind of plastic. I don't know. This is the, just regular plastic. These are the bags that my stencils come in from my manufacturer and I don't throw away anything. So I save them. <laughs> so this is just something that I have because I get it, but you guys get plastic all the time from different kinds of packages. So you can use that. Right. Um, and I'm gonna have to put diamond glaze in my, um, Amazon store. I don't think I put that in there. So let's do one together. Well, the diamond glaze is just on the side where the plastic was, but no, it's, it's not the same thing. Like it's a completely different product. Mm -hmm. It does have some odor, um, but like barely you guys. Well, I'm saying it depends, odor. you know, if you want a shiny product, like the lanterns, oh. you know, that you made that lantern you made, you want a shiny product. I think, I think you do. I would be happy with this. With the I am, there are times when you don't want it as shiny. As shiny, I think the larger issue for most people, and you guys can tell me if you agree or not, is that the the uh, the epoxy resin is so caustic, baby. Like if I had used it today and we came out here tonight, oh, we'd be dull. Yeah, yeah. And so I think that's the issue with the epoxy resin is that it really does kick you out of your workspace for like. The wrong of the day. So we have um, Easter is right around the corner. So let's use um, an Easter paper. Yes, Vivian Phillips says, "Yeah, the bunny." Uh, Sandy Stanford, I know somebody uses the inside bag in cereal boxes to create rice paper. Ooh. Shane Sellers asks, "Diamond glaze on both sides of paper?" Yep, we're gonna do it together right now. And so I have my plastic and the plastic is gonna keep the paper from sticking to the surface, right? And I'm just gonna go over it with my diamond glaze. I'm using it foolproof. If I want it, I could, if you're working on a project and maybe you want it to be warmer, you could add, you know, a product to it, like coffee maybe, or I would probably add some of my acrylic ink to make it warmer. But I think for spring, uh, we like things to look kind of fresh, right? I watch people do this with napkins. And so I was curious to see what would happen with my paper, um, just because the artwork is already on the paper. So if you could change the quality of the paper, then it just opens up more possibilities for ways that you guys can use the images that you guys have grown to love. 
like this one, which was created by my creative director, Lexi Grenzer. But I see I'm being really generous with this, right? I really want it to seep into the paper. Okay, so you guys see how I did the one side, right? And now I'm gonna do the back side. So what I found that in order for me to get like that really deep transparency that I'm looking for, that misting my paper first really, really made a big difference for me. So I'm gonna miss this, not a ton, cause I don't want to um, dilute my product, but just enough. You guys see how the paper got more um, transparent just from the water. And now I'm gonna go over that with some more of the diamond glaze. And I'm just putting a nice, um, generous coat over the top. And um, just imagine like the catalog of baby animals by um, Lexi would be so cute if you had a whole bunch of pieces that were transparent that perhaps you could overlay on the top of the script paper. And you wouldn't, I mean, you could glue them down you certainly could, but you wouldn't have to. Like if you're doing junk journals and you just want something cute that you can slide in and out of your envelope, like these would be so cute. Or if you're working with tags, you can just tie them to the top of your tag and then your script or your saying or whatever you have below would still show through um, your little baby animal that you had over the top. I just think it's so cute. Um, I am super excited about this idea and I'll be using these in my own journal. And so I put it on there. I want to show you guys a trick because sometimes getting it off the paper can be a little tricky. And so I learned this from a YouTube video. I wish I would have remembered the page, but she took her brush and she just kind of pushed the edges up a little bit and kind of rolled them a little bit. I'm choosing this side because I have a lot of just white space right here. And um, that way, once it dries, it's easier for you to like get a starting point to pull this off of the plastic here. And so that's it. Like, how easy is that, right? And so when this dries, um, this was the paper that I did this process on with the diamond glaze. And so this was the result I got. So you can make the resin paper, absolutely, um, if you're used to working with the resin. Um, and you don't have an issue with it. But if you're someone that's more sensitive to odors or maybe resin scares you a little bit, um, this can be um, an option for you to make something that's kind of like resin paper. It doesn't have the same structure as resin paper, right? It's not as hard. Although I just did this a couple of hours ago. So it may be that tomorrow it may have a little bit more structure to it. And you also have the other option of... Um, just spraying your paper with the clear coats. And I think that that gives you like a really kind of ethereal kind of, uh, I don't know. I just, I like it. <laughs> it does. It's a lot like either like deli paper or like vellum, but this is a lot thinner than a lot of the vellum because this tissue paper is only 18 pounds. So yes, this is a lot like the vellum. And then just like with vellum, you know, the white is more transparent. So I have a space heater under my desk. <laughs> so I set it on the floor under my desk and it dried in about an hour. It didn't take hardly any time at all to dry. Vicki Ritchie asks, can you write on it if you're using it as a price tag? Ooh, like afterwards? Yeah, you can absolutely write on it. Whatever side you guys have on the plastic, is going to be shiny because the plastic is so smooth. And so the product dries really smooth. But the upside is like more matte and the side against the plastic is more shiny. So you can still control like, you know, how you want it to look on your final project based on how you lay it down. But you can absolutely write on these, whether it's like the oil paper or the deli paper or the glassine paper, you really do get the same effects um, when you're using these.